book of Revelation, chapter book of Revelation, chapter twenty one and verse three. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. The tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them. God himself will be with them. And be their God. And be their God. Hallelujah. God himself will be with them and be their God. So here the Lord says, here yeah, in Revelation we read this. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. The purpose of God creating man itself. The tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. If you just have it in mind, we'll come back to this verse in the end. We are going to see about it in detail. Now, here the Lord, the word of God says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he is, he will dwell with them. So the dwelling place of God, the Lord wants his uh, you know, dwelling place to be among men. That was the purpose he created man in the beginning, in his own image. God created man and woman in his own image. And he wanted to, you know, uh, so when God created what he did, he did not create like any other animal or any other, other birds, but he breathed his breath into the nostrils of man. And man became a living soul. Hallelujah. Truth, man became a living soul. So the spirit of God came into man. Hallelujah. Why God did that? Because God is a spirit. So when God is the spirit and this man has the spirit of God, this God's spirit, God is the spirit and God and the spirit in God, in the man, the spirit of God in man can communicate easily. Hallelujah. He could communicate to the man easily through his spirit that was dwelling in man initially. Hallelujah. So when man sinned against God by hearing, listening to the serpent and you know, Disobeying God, God said, You shall die, and the enemy said, You shall not die. The death the Lord mentioned was about the life of God leaving man. Hallelujah. Spirit of God leaving man, leaving beside, uh, leaving behind, that the spirit of man alone is present. But the spirit, the spirit of God, the life of God left him because the, what, what came inside, when he heard the voice of the serpent, the spirit of the enemy, Hallelujah. So God's spirit couldn't be any more there in man. So now the communication between God and man got disconnected. The communion between God and man. Why? If you read Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, if you read, please read Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8. That was the regular practice. And what happened now after uh, listening to the serpent? And they heard the sound of the Lord God. They, when they, they, when after they heard the song, voice of the serpent. Now, when they heard the sound of the Lord God, walking in the garden, walking in the garden, in the cool of the day, in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife, Adam and his wife, hid themselves, hid them, hid themselves. From the presence of the Lord God. From the presence of the Lord God. Among the trees, among of, the the trees of God. Hallelujah. When they heard the sound of Lord God walking in the garden, in the cool of the day, Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. They couldn't stand the presence of God. They were walking with him, they were talking with him, they were come, they were having nice communion with him. As long as the life of God was in them. Hallelujah. They were able to interact 
God was able to, you know, convey things. The language between God and us, I always used to say, it's not any particular language. It is the spirit of understanding. The spirit to spirit communication. Hallelujah. So, so, God was able to convey his mind to them. But now, hallelujah, when they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden, Adam and his wife, what did they do? Hid themselves. Hid themselves from the presence of God. They could no longer obey the presence of God. They couldn't be there in the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. They wanted to be away from the presence of God. They could not. God wanted. He came in spite of, God will know, like God knows right about what had happened. In spite of that, God came to have communion with them, but they couldn't have any more communion with God. They hid themselves from God among the trees of the garden. Hallelujah. This is what is happening. Oh, glory to God. So God wanted to have fellowship, communion, one-to-one -one relationship with man, to communicate with man. God who is in his glory comes down to the earth, hallelujah, to have fellowship with man. But man, because of his, hallelujah, shortcomings, because of his disobedience, hallelujah, because of his disobedience, giving room for the darkness, giving room for the in the voices of the serpent, he couldn't uh, bear the voice of God or the sound of God. Hallelujah! He couldn't bear it. So they hid themselves from the presence of God. They never wanted the presence of God. That's what happens. People, oh, hallelujah, glory to God, go away from God. Why? Hallelujah, glory to God. Because they give heed to some other voices, so many other voices. So they don't want to come to the presence of God, we may not be also, if you write, you know, not even many wrong voices, but if you listen to lots of worldly voices, say TV, movie, and even news, if you keep on listening, then if you go and read the Bible, will you have the concentration? No, you will not be able to. You will try to read one line, again another line, same line you will be reading, oh, I am not yet very tired, I am not able to read, I will read too. Because you are loaded with so many other voices and if you try to listen to the God's voice, you will not be able to. Hallelujah! That's why we have to give the first place to God, the pre preeminence to God. First we have to seek God and His presence. Hallelujah! If you try to do so many other things and try to do or even pray, you will not be able to. Hallelujah! So we will come to that later. Now, so since because the man lost the communication with God, communion with God, one-to-one uh, -one fellowship with God, we know what happened. God killed an animal and shed the blood and gave that uh, you know, skin as a clothing for Adam and Eve. From then onwards, people were you know, giving sacrifices to God. Hallelujah! To seek God. Amen. Just to seek God. But they couldn't have any more communion. But Except for one man, uh, Enoch, before the you know floods, Enoch walked with God. Hallelujah. He walked with God. Though, hallelujah, glory to God. He continuously sought the presence of God, stubbornly sought the presence of God, willingly sought the presence of God, and he was able to walk with God, live with God, walking with God means being one with God. Hallelujah. And the word of God says he walked with God and he God was not, God. he was not. Well, God took him up before the destruction, before the floods, God took him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a symbolic to the rapture. Amen. So we don't have time to show if you want to read, really, please read that also. Genesis 8, 24. Enoch walked uh, with God. Yeah, Enoch walked with God. And he was not. He was not. For God took him. For God took him. Hallelujah. So this is what, uh, it's symbolic to the, um, what to say, the rapture. You know, people who walk with God, when Jesus comes in the midair, people will be taken up in the midair. Hallelujah. When we keep walking with God. And uh, they say, book of Enoch and all that, they say they found out and all that, how far it is true, we do not know. And
and uh, in the day speaking about the last days and all that, uh, we do not know the authenticity of all those things. So, uh, we see here, Enoch walked with God and he was not. And uh, the, the Noah also, the word of God says in uh, chapter 6 that uh, Noah walked with God. Right? Chapter 6 and verse 9. This is the gen genealogy, oh, yeah. genealogy of Noah. Yeah. Noah was a just man. Yeah. Perfect in his generation. Yeah. Noah walked with God. Yeah. Noah walked with God perfect in his generations. So it's not, it's not perfect before God. He was perfect in his generations. Hallelujah. Nobody is perfect before God. In his generation, God found him to be perfect. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So, if we see like this, and as we keep going, like we see Abraham and other forefathers, patriarchs, they gave sacrifices to God, to honor God, and uh, to seek God, to have communion with God. Whenever they wanted to seek God, they had to give sacrifices. And it came to uh, Moses, when Moses led the people of God, Israelites, out of Egypt. Hallelujah. And God gave them this how to give sacrifices and all that. All the ordinances God taught him. And this is what the second part. The first thing Adam and Eve we saw how God wanted to dwell among men. Here again the Lord says, please read Exodus. Book of Exodus chapter 25 and verse 8. Book of Exodus 25 and 8. And let them make me a sanctuary. Yeah, let them make me a sanctuary. That I may dwell among them. That I may dwell among them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Later when the Lord brought out the people of Israel from Egypt. And God speaks to Moses in that chapter. And God tells them. Uh, to tell the children of Israel to bring offering, everyone who gives it willingly, me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. When it, now it, when it comes, Adam and Eve, he was walking along with them. Hallelujah. Walking and talking. Here, he couldn't have such fellowship, but he says, I can dwell among you, so make me a sanctuary. So, hallelujah, glory to God. I want to dwell among you, not hallelujah. One to one, personal relationship was not there. One to one, even Moses had to speak to God before him. Moses stood before God, hallelujah. But we, we are going to see that we are having greater experience that we can have God within us, hallelujah. That experience is not there here, the Lord says, Make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, among the Israelites. And that sanctuary, the Lord says, how should you, from where will he speak? Hallelujah. In that sanctuary, please read and uh, hallelujah. Verse 10. And now the Lord says, they shall make an ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits shall be its length, a cubit and a half its width. A cubit and a half its height. Hallelujah. And he says, You shall overlay it with pure gold inside and out. You shall overlay it and shall make on it a molding of a gold all around. Hallelujah. So the Lord gives instructions how to make the ark. And on that ark, they are keeping that, uh, you know, mercy seat. Verse 17, you shall make a mercy seat of pure gold. Two and a half cubits shall be its length and a cubit and a half its width. So God was speaking from this mercy seat to the people of God, to Moses. And Moses carried the message to the people. But before coming to the mercy seat, what they had to do? This mercy seat was in the most holy place. But before that, the entry, the entrance was the, you know, altar where they, they gave sacrifices. Hallelujah. And uh, if you read, God gives vivid instructions how they have to make each and everything and how they have to, hallelujah, make uh, 
the altar of sacrifice. Hallelujah. When you enter, there will be altar of sacrifice. And then there will be a bronze uh, a vessel with water where they had to wash. So after giving sacrifices, they wash themselves in the water and then they enter the uh, holy place. So the sacrifices they offer, the blood shed. They shed the blood and then they wash themselves and then they enter the holy place. If you enter the holy place, they, you, then you will see the lamb. Hallelujah, the menorah, they say. Uh, I, if I, I read it and there's a lot of uh, uh, explanation the Lord gave last time, last week. Um, so we can't, we don't have time. After that only the whole, most holy place and in that place only was what? Uh, this uh, Ark of the Covenant. Hallelujah. So read um, the outer space. There and then holy place where that um, lamp was there and that uh, showbread was there and then the Ark of the Covenant. So to come to the mercy seat, they had to shed the blood and even that blood of animals, they were able to cover the sins, not remo remove the sins out of people. Hallelujah. If you read Psalm 32 and 1, please read. Psalm 32 and verse 1. He, blessed is he, whose transgression is forgiven. Whose transgression is forgiven. Whose sin is covered. Yes. Transgression is if you sacrifice, give manual sacrifice, your sins will be forgiven, but it is not totally removed, it is covered. Hallelujah. Manual sacrifices and they covered their sin. But still, the guilty conscience was still, hallelujah, hanging over. It was like still worrying them. They didn't have the clear conscience. Even in Hebrews, that in detail, the author speaks about it. If you read, please read that, hallelujah, chapter 9 and verse 12 and 13. Hebrews 9, 12, 13. Oh, hallelujah. Hmm. Not with the blood of goats hmm. and calves. Not with the blood of goats and calves. But with his own blood. With his own blood. He entered the most holy place. He entered the most holy place. Once for all. Once for all. Having. Having. Obtained eternal redemption. Yeah. Having obtained. He once for all offered himself having eternal redemption. For if the blood of bulls and goats, and yeah, if the blood of bull, the blood of bulls and goats, and the ashes of heifer, uh, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh. Those animals killing, animal killing, could only purify the flesh, but not the conscience. Hallelujah. It, it, it was okay, your sin is, your, your, some, some sin they have committed, okay, it's forgiven. Whatever you did it in the flesh, it's forgiven. But what about the conscience? Nothing, no remission. Hallelujah! How much more if it purifies, purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from the dead works to serve the true living God? Serve the living God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, by offering the animal sacrifices to God and, you know, making a tabernacle according to the instruction of God and, you know, I mean, how God gives instruction, how, um, you know, if you read the 25th chapter and 26th chapter of Exodus and all that, in detail, God gives them, hallelujah, all the ordinances, how they have to give the sacrifice and all that. So that at least the Lord sees like somehow I may be able to come down. Hallelujah to speak to men. See the longing of the true living God. So much of you know, hallelujah, glory to God, instructions and Moses also did according to how God wanted uh, things to be done. In spite of that, hallelujah, the most holy God couldn't come down very often. Hallelujah. 
Moses had to be in 40 days fasting on the hill mountain top and you know he was waiting upon God and to receive the Ten Commandments. Hallelujah! So much of you know rigorous uh, you know activities they had to do for God to come down to speak to men. In spite of that it was not complete. Hallelujah! God couldn't. Oh hallelujah, glory to the home among men through the blood of animals, bulls and calves and heifers. He couldn't do that. So only this is what is the Old Testament. Hallelujah. And there the Lord says, please read that um, Exodus 25, verse 8 again. Yeah. And let them make me a sanctuary. Let them make me a sanctuary. That I may dwell among them. That I may dwell among them. According to all that I show you. According to all that I show you. That is. That is. The pattern of the tabernacle. The pattern of the tabernacle. And the pattern of all its furnishings. The pattern of all its furnishings. Just so it just so you shall make it. Just so you, you shall make it. Hallelujah. So, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Uh, uh, book of Leviticus chapter 26 and 11. Please read. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. I will set my tabernacle. I will set my tabernacle among you. Among you. And my soul shall not abhor it. See? Abhor you. Abhor you. Why? All innocent people and trying to cover up their sin, their mistake by putting the blame on somebody else and you know, trying to say that we are right. That I couldn't do. I think if you say sorry, nothing wrong. Why can't, you know, the Bible says you have to forgive as Bible says it's forgive. Those who, you know, uh, uh, Jesus says, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they have done. Such people automatically we can forgive. Knowingly, if people do, Jesus also says, when Peter asks, how many times I have to forgive my brother? If he comes and asks pardon, if he comes and asks pardon, hallelujah, 770 times, okay. So, if they are willingly, knowingly doing things which are not right, they have to definitely come and ask pardon. Only then, People can forgive. So don't try to manipulate the word of God. Hallelujah. And then I said, Lord, why only I'm getting angry? Sometimes I'm not able to tolerate. We, so imperfect <coughs> people, cannot tolerate another imperfect people. How much more God? Hallelujah, I was thinking. Things possible to communicate with them, to reveal his heart to them. Hallelujah. To reveal his mind to them. Hallelujah. To convey his desires to them. But still, again, they made it a tradition. But they couldn't have one-to-one -one communion with God. Hallelujah. Traditionally, they were doing all rituals and all things. Oh, hallelujah. The connectivity with God couldn't happen. Except for Moses. Moses had to speak to God and to Aaron. And, um, you know, Aaron conveyed the message to the people. So it was like that. So even that uh, Old Testament, the law of Moses, law of, law of God given to Moses and this tabernacle, God wanted to dwell. Yeah, please read this verse. To Leviticus 26, 11. I will set my tabernacle among you. I will set my tabernacle among you. And my soul shall not abhor you. My soul shall not abhor you. Hallelujah. So the Lord says, I will set my tabernacle among you. My soul shall not abhor you. I will walk among you. I will walk among you. And be your God. See, the Lord's desire. I will walk among you and be your God. And you shall be my people. Oh, this is what the relationship. I shall be your God and you shall be my people. Amen. My people. My people, you shall be my people. I shall be your God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So this is what. Why he wants to set the tabernacle? I will walk among you and you shall be my people and I shall be your God. 
Hallelujah, glory to God. Even in the book of Deuteronomy, right? Please read. There I show me 23 and 14. For the Lord your God, for the Lord your God, walks in the midst of your camp, walks in the midst of your camp, to deliver you, to deliver you, and give you, give your, give you, give your enemies, yeah, over to you, to deliver you and give your enemies over to you, therefore, therefore, your camp shall be holy, your camp shall be holy, that he may see no unclean thing among you, that he may see no unclean thing among you, and turn away from you, and turn away from you. Hallelujah, Lord, your God walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and give your enemies over to you. So the Lord says, keep your camp holy, that the Lord will be among you, amen, that he may not turn away from you. So the Lord, it, the, all these rituals they did, but yet it was still incomplete without the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Now, third portion. First we saw Adam and Eve. And then second, the tabernacle in the wilderness where God says, make a tabernacle, sanctuary, I want to dwell among you and I want to be your God and you my people. Fine. And then now, thirdly, we see, hallelujah, glory to God. Mm, uh, in New Testament, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians 6.16. Okay, and what agreement has the temple of God with idols? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. So, the third sanctuary which God chose. You are the temple of the living God. As God has said. As God has said. I will dwell in them. I will dwell not among them. I will dwell in them. And walk among them. Walk among them. I will be their God. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. They shall be my people. Amen. The Lord says, You are the temple of the living God. Finally, God chose man to become the temple of God. How? We read, Hallelujah, God spoke to Moses from the mercy seat and that mercy seat ark of the covenant was covered with gold in and out covered thoroughly with gold that was a precious metal right God chose that the highest the best God chose the glow to cover that ark of the covenant now in the New Testament the word of God says was first uh, Peter chapter 1 and verse 19 please read this is what the Lord uh, uh, spoke to me. Yeah, first uh, Peter one and nineteen, chapter one but, verse. But with the precious blood of Christ, verse, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold. Amen. Corruptible things like silver or gold. From your aimless conduct, from your aimless conduct, received by tradition from your father, received from the pre tradition uh, by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. Yeah, you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb. Yeah, precious than silver, precious than gold. Hallelujah. So, precious blood of Christ as of a lamb. Without blemish and without spot. Yeah, without blemish and without spot. Hallelujah. So, you are redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. You have to believe in the death and in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is only very, very important. Amen. The enemy... Hallelujah, how subtle he is working. As I told you, I think last week also I mentioned, I was wondering how many people, um, you know, they tried to get them converted to Islam. And uh, many Christians, many so-called preachers, many, many genuine preachers won't do that. 
and what was the reason? Uh, what was the uh, what is the teaching? They say, oh, we believe in Jesus. He is the prophet. And they say, Jesus is not the Son of God. Then God told, reminded me about the verse from First John, right? Last week I showed you also. Who is that Antichrist? He is the one who denies Jesus as the Son of God. So now clearly we know what is the Antichrist spirit. He who denies Jesus as the Son of God. And they say, had Jesus anywhere said that he is the Son of God? Many places he said, if you don't believe that I am the Son, you will die in your sin. And oh, we won't take Paul, what Paul says. We won't take what other disciples say. Then we take you what you say. Hallelujah. And second thing they would say, Jesus did not die. Ha ha. Hallelujah. The main, you know, crux of the matter, or the way they say, right? The Christianity is the death, shedding of blood, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe in God, that God raised him from the dead and confess with your mouth, that is salvation. They deny the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. They give some fair tales. So Jesus did not die. He hid himself. In his place, somebody else died and Jesus was taken up into him. <laughs> what a story is that? From where they, they all cooked up stories they will say and people should listen and believe. And they are spreading it like anything. Polytheism they call it. Too many gods. Only one God, God the Father. And if you call Jesus and Holy Spirit, all oh, these polytheism, many gods. They don't understand when we need not argue or you know, prove. We need not, there is no necessity for us to prove them if they are not willing to really learn or to really know for the sake of argument we should not talk with anybody this truth, the shedding of blood of Jesus Christ hallelujah, only can bring redemption hallelujah to the mankind and cleanse his conscience from dead works hallelujah to serve the living God and hallelujah glory to God because he offered himself as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Amen. Hallelujah. The whole mankind, God's our God wanted to dwell in them. Oh, praise be to God. And hallelujah among them. So, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are redeemed. Hallelujah. As I always used to tell you how. See, we were dead in sins and trespasses. Right from Adam. The spirit became dead. It was not active. Only flesh was so active. The spirit was just, you know, uh, uh, dead from uh, the life of God. And Jesus says, I have come to give life and life in abundance. In the Garden of Eden, just God breathed his breath and man became a living stone. Here Jesus had to really give his life on the cross. Hallelujah. And whoever believes the life of Jesus Christ enters into him, in him and quickens his dead spirit of man. Hallelujah. And he receives life and our life in the life of Jesus. And as he grows the life in abundance that Lord gives. And life in abundance is the eternal life. Hallelujah. So this is the purpose of our being Christians. We don't know the value of Oh, hallelujah, being a Christian, it is not a, some, any other religion, one other religion. No, deny Christ. But this, the Lord always said, falling away should come first. Many will be, many will deny. Hallelujah, the last days signs are happening. Antichrist spirit is working hard. What are we Christians doing? No, knowing and having the one and only true God. Oh, Christians are so, as usual, very casual. The blood of Jesus Christ only can redeem a person, can deliver a person's conscience and give him a brand new, oh hallelujah, life in the spirit, in the conscience, in the soul, and even in the body. Hallelujah. Completion starts only with the shedding of blood. 
of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's the beginning. And then, hallelujah, glory to God. Uh, God says like, you know, you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So, what should we do? We'll come back to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. We saw, you are the temple of the living God. And what should you do? Please read. Quickly. Verse 14 onwards. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Yeah. If you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, how should you be? Many, many churches, they don't teach this to the believers. Even if we teach believers, they don't take this seriously. Redeemed by the people of God should live a severed life, separated life, Hallelujah. And uh, here, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And then, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? Yes, what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? <coughs> Who's the, if you read <coughs> Second Thessalonians chapter 2, Unless the lawless one appears. Who's the lawless one? Antichrist. What has the righteousness to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? What communion? If you are a redeemed person, you are a child of light. Light with the darkness. And what accord has Christ with Belial? What accord has Christ with Belial? What, what have you to do with, you know, Belial, demonic people or this witchcraft or sorcery or all those evil things. Mm. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? What part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Amen. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God as God has said. Hallelujah, you are the temple of the living God. God dwells in you. Remember the worthiness of you. How can you go and be mingled with any other worldly person with the worldly people? We see, as, a, as soon as I got, uh, um, I should say converted only from nominal Christian to a spiritual Christian, when we, God put us into the world, the Lord also tells the disciples, I send you into the world. Hallelujah. Sheep among the wolves. Be innocent as a dove, wise as a serpent, he says. Again in John, uh, um, uh, John's Gospel, if you read 16th chapter, 17th chapter, the Lord says, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. As I am not of the world, you are not of the world. If you are a Christian, if you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus, if you believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, if you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you will live a separated life. You will not mingle with the unbelievers. You will not be unequally yoked with the unbelievers. Hallelujah! And your communication, your connection, your communion, your fellowship, everything will be Oh, with Jesus Christ, with God and godly people. How can that be? That's how we, we know, uh, nobody forced it on us. When he got converted in spirit, in heart, at heart, hallelujah, automatically lifestyle changed. Amen. We were, I mean, before, come, before accepting Christ, before being born again, I was a Christian who used to go to church on Christmas, New Year and Easter. Can you believe it? Now I always want to be in the church. I was that, uh, that kind of a Christian. But when I oh, accepted Christ, oh God, when I take, uh, really, we should not say accepted, I tasted, I should say, Christ. If you have tasted, the Lord is good. You will automatically be moved by the Spirit of God to do things that are fitting. Hallelujah! You will automatically, God will separate you. Everything, even the minute thing, the Lord reminded me about, you know, putting the face cream and even putting all those things. Everything the Lord reminded me. I'll be like, no, Lord, what, what, what? 
middle of the night, Lord will remind me about something. Okay, I'll go through it, Lord. Even the books, not unwanted, unclean books, ordinary worldly things. Everything at the age of 20. Oh, I love God so much. I wanted to do everything and anything and everything for God. Well, how do I, every day I love my God so much? Because the Lord forgave me. He forgave all my sins when I confessed it. So I became, all the sins were rolled out of my heart. I could feel it. My, my, my heart was so light and there was so, so much space and room for God to love God. Hallelujah. So, Hallelujah, I occupied those space, the, the empty space, emptied by, you know, um, they removed all the sins and things removed out of my conscience with word of God and praying and having fellowship and, you know, uh, everything. So I became stronger in the Lord. We should also do that many people, you know, as if they born again, or oh, be taken baptism, I go to church and receive the anointing, many things like, you know, they are deceiving themselves. They'll say all dating and you know, and occasional. occasional drinking and occasional smoking. So much of deception. If you are really born again, if you are the temple of the true living, and remember, the Spirit of God dwells in me. So I cannot, he cannot, I cannot hurt him, I cannot grieve him. Grieve not the Holy Spirit that you have received for the day of redemption. The Word of God says. The Holy Spirit is sensitive. So whatever affects him, whatever hurts him, whatever friendship, whatever relationship, whatever activity that would hurt him or defile your spirit, oh, don't be, don't do it. Hallelujah. Separate yourself. Let people come to your light. You don't go to darkness. Hallelujah. Let people come to your light seeking God. Otherwise, I have no business with them. Even I was like that, whether it's family or relationship or friends, I don't know. After that, everything went off. Even when I was working for nine and a half years, immediately God put me into the place they could know who a true Christian, how a true Christian would be. Hallelujah! They testified about it. To the extent that we, they said, that I could, I could, we could see your God and you. So we should also be like that because, you know, um, you know, we are not like uh, pretenders coming to church one post and going to office another person, coming to home another person. No! Wherever we, are, we go, it is marketplace, shop or home or wherever, we are the redeemed people of God. Hallelujah! So that's how we have to be. And the blood of Jesus Christ has redeemed us. First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 and 17 says that. First Corinthians chapter 6 and last two verses says that. If you have time, quickly read it, please. First Corinthians 3, 16, 17. Hallelujah. Do you not know? Yeah. Do you not know? That you are the temple of God. That you are the temple of God. And that the Spirit of God. That the Spirit of God. Dwells in you. Dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, if anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. Oh God, Hallelujah! God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple you are? Which temple you are? So let no one deceive himself. Hallelujah! If the Apostle Paul writes this, Spirit to you, Hallelujah! Cleanse your conscience. Cleanse your conscience. And given you a brand new person, brand new spirit, brand new mind, become a brand new person, new creator in Christ Jesus, and how much more you should know to preserve it. Hallelujah! In chapter 6 and last two verses. Or do you not know? Uh, 19 and 20. Or do you not know? That your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Who is in you? Who is in you? Whom you have from God. Uh, whom you have from God. And you are not your own. You are not your own. After being redeemed, remember, hallelujah, we don't belong to us as we belong to Christ. What a privilege. Do you not know 
that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. This body God has chosen to be his dwelling place. Hallelujah for his Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own. And then for you were bought at a price. You were bought. Always remember I don't belong to myself. I was once a slave to the devil because I was committing sin and the devil sins from the beginning. Hallow sin is of the devil and I was serving sin uh, by which I was serving the devil. Hallelujah. I was belonging to the devil. God in his mercy graciously sent his only begotten son, gave the ransom, the praise, the blood of Jesus Christ through his death. Hallelujah. And for me, so I have, I have a price. That is my, the blood of Jesus Christ. So I don't belong to myself. I belong to Jesus Christ. I am the belonging of my Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! This preciousness you should know. We all knew. We, that's why we, we were able to walk accordingly. You are not your own. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Your body belongs to God. Your spirit belongs to God. So glorify God in your body and in your spirit. 2 Corinthians 7 one says, Apostle Paul says, so, hallelujah, sanctify your body and your spirit. So the enemy will try to defile these two. Hallelujah. So how should you do? Seven, Second Corinthians 7. Therefore, uh, therefore, having these promises, having these promises, beloved, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. Yes, having these promises, beloved, which promise we saw? I will dwell in you, I will be your God and you will be my people, I will walk among you. Previous was what we read in the beginning, read in the beginning. So having these promises of God dwelling in us and we, we being his people and he our God, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Amen. When you, hallelujah, glory to God. How can it be, how can this happen? When you are true, honest with God, God is all the more faithful to remove all the sins. We, we all of us chapter. Oh, hallelujah, glory to God. Verse 8, it says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If, verse 9, 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and just to give us, to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and, the, and his word is not in us. Many people say, oh, I don't have any sin for my knowledge, my knowledge. I don't think I've committed any sin to anybody. If you say, God will forgive your sin. There's some people I've heard say, telling that and we'll be blinking what to tell them. I don't, bluntly they'll say, I don't have any sin. I've not done any wrong to anybody. So we have to tell them that sin follows from Adam. Only through Jesus Christ it is totally removed. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Chapter 2, verse 1, 2. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. What a sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. He is our advocate with the Father. He pleads on your behalf. And verse 2. He himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the whole world. Whole world he laid down his life. Whoever comes to him believes in him really go on the right track, they will find this experience of being relieved of all the sins and guilty conscience and all kinds of, you know, sins being 
Taravirim, all that we have to do is to confess our sins. And He is faithful and just to forgive. Hallelujah, our sins. And to not only forgive, cleanse us from all right unrighteousness. Forgiving and also cleansing takes place simultaneously. All that we have to do is to be honest with Him. Sincerely, we have to mean that we don't want that sin in us. We don't want to commit sin. We don't want that, don't like that sin. I want to take the take the sin out of me by the roots. Hallelujah. If you only yearn for it, oh God, God wants such people. Many people don't really understand the value of this. Oh God, cry out. Call out to him desperately, say, Lord, I want to get rid of all those things that are troubling my conscience, my spirit. I want the root of sin to be removed from me. Oh, glory to God, all the filthiness, all the filthiness of the flesh and the spirit, oh, can be removed in the fear of God. However, God forgives and, you know, removes all the sins, cleanses you from all sins. The enemy, the world will always try to defile you. Always you have to be under the refuge of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Never run away from the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Never run away from the protection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Always be secured under the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Cover yourself under the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Always wash yourself under the, with the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Or as I told you, like, you know, that the mercy seat, the Ark of the Covenant, hallelujah. So it, it was covered with the gold, in and out. So also, more precious than gold is the blood of Jesus Christ. Our conscience, our spirit, our heart should be covered with the blood of Jesus Christ, in and out. So that the spirit of the world, the spirit of the devil cannot penetrate. Hallelujah into us to defy us. Amen. If you are well protected under the, with the blood of Jesus Christ, oh glory to God, always be very calm, cautious or alert and always hallelujah. We, we cannot with our strength or oh, live a righteous holy life. Only with the help of God, with the help of Holy Spirit, with the help of the word of God, with the help of the blood of Jesus Christ. We always have all the aids that are needed, that we need and we have to use them Keep yourself with the blood of Jesus Christ. Humble yourself. Hallelujah. Glory. Mercy seat means grace, right? We have to humble before, be humble before Him. And in, in such person, I mean, again, another verse comes to my mind what to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Isaiah 57 and verse 15. The Lord says, I, the lofty and the holy one who dwells in the high places, heavenly places, where will I want to dwell? I want to dwell among, dwell in a person whose heart, who has a broken and a contrite spirit, contrite heart. Hallelujah. God wants to dwell in a broken heart and a contrite spirit. That means humble person. Those who humble themselves. Those who are broken in heart, broken in spirit. Those who are contrite. Contrite means, oh, understanding their fault and accepting and want to get uh, rectified. Hallelujah! Such person, the Lord says, I want to dwell in such person. Such a great God. He's please read if you want. That verse 15. For I thus say, says the high. Yeah, for God, thus says the high and lofty one. Lord, who inhabits eternity. Where he lives? Who inhabits eternity? Whose name is holy. Whose name is holy. I dwell in the high. I dwell in the high. And holy place. Holy place. He dwells in the high and holy place. With him. With him. Who has a contrite and humble spirit. Now who has a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble. To revive the spirit of the humble. And to revive the heart of the contrite yeah, ones. Yeah. To revive the heart of the contrite ones. I dwell among them. Hallelujah. I'm such a great God, he says. I want to humble myself and dwell in such a person. Like you and me, I want to always say that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Many times, you know, sometimes we feel, oh, no, 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 sometimes I know. Let me humble myself before God. Let not my spirit, I may not feel haughty or proud and all that, but when I don't feel humble, in my spirit, I say, oh, something is wrong in my spirit. 
Let me search myself, contract spirit, broken heart. I humble myself, go to the presence. Only then I can feel the presence of God in me. That means God comes into me and dwells in me. The presence of God is, hallelujah, very much in me. Hallelujah. So we have to do all that. So when, how the Ark of the Covenant was covered with the precious gold, so also we have to be covered with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. It is a covenant box. So also through baptism, we are making a covenant of good conscience according to 1 Peter 3.20. Uh, the conscience, our conscience is cleared and, and by the blood of Jesus Christ. And through the baptism, please read uh, 1 Peter 3.20. There uh, Peter says, who formerly were disobedient and when once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was prepared, being prepared in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through water. There is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Through the blood of Jesus Christ, our, oh hallelujah, conscience is cleansed. Again, baptism is burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Through which, it is the uh, answer of a good conscience. You receive a good conscience, covenant with God. Hallelujah. So you are the Ark of the Covenant and God dwells in you. You are the temple of the living God. Remember how God wants you to live a life that is Oh, hallelujah, acceptable to him. Hallelujah. So, since 21. Hallelujah. That's why I don't prepare a message. I want the Lord to take control. Uh, please read Revelation 21 and? 3. 3. And I heard a loud voice from heaven. I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Say, yeah. Behold, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with Men. The tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people they shall be his people and himself will be with them yeah God himself will be see here again it comes everywhere we read in the tabernacle of Moses in the wilderness there the Lord says I shall be their God and they shall be my people I will dwell among them I will more among them, <coughs> even in 2 Corinthians 6, redeemed people is saying, I shall be your God, you shall be my people, I will dwell in you, I will move among you. Here in Revelation, also final book of God. Again the Lord says, all that the Lord want, wants is to have fellowship with this human race. Never wanted to lose them. If, they, if he had only wanted, he could have extinguished this human race completely, thoroughly destroyed this human race. Right? And he could have created another Adam, another Eve. He didn't do that. Hallelujah. He never wanted to lose this. Hallelujah. His first creation of human race. Hallelujah. So only, there's so much warfare, so much struggle. Oh, the Antichrist and the serpent, the great serpent, the dragon, the devil, Satan, tunnel warfare in the revelations. Final result is that the enemy is totally put to defeat and cast into the lake of fire. Amen. But the people of God, the redeemed people of God are there. The Lord says, Hallelujah. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. When? Verse 12, 1 onwards. Now I saw a new heaven, new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And then only the Lord says, Behold the tabernacle of God. Everything, new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem, everything made new after the enemy was cast into the hell. And the Lord, word of God says, verse 4, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and they shall be no, there shall be no more death, no sorrow, not crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. 
and he said to him, said to me, right, for these words are true and faithful. Hallelujah. And then finally he says, it is done. Verse 6, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. It is done. Finished. What I wanted to do for the human race, oh, I've done it. The enemy struggled and strived hard. Finally, he is thoroughly defeated. Hallelujah. So only we have to understand. John says, about John, the word of God says, he has come to make ready a people prepared for God. That's why all this struggle. All people cannot. People, to make ready people prepared for God. That's why the church, that's why the servant of God. But where the this one ignorant of all this truth. So tabernacle of God, dwelling place of God from Adam we saw, the tabernacle of Moses, wilderness we saw, then we are the New Testament tabernacle, we are the temple of the living God we saw. Finally in the new heaven, new earth, the Lord says, I will be their God and they shall be my people. Hallelujah.